on a date with Patrick Mason. I'm so happy to be here hey, on a date love. with you. <laughs> I know how many people are jealous on me right now. Are they? Yeah. <laughs> but I'm gonna make it. I'm, I'm gonna try to create a vibe so it feels like they are also on a date with you. Well, let's go. Let's go. Okay. Um, I have one question. Here we go. <laughs> and sipping on a daiquiri. <laughs> but, um, because all these apps right now, right? Dating yes. apps. Do you think they are fun or do you think it's more fun to meet in a bar or at a club? Oh, I mean, I always prefer like a live meeting over an app. Mm. But nowadays it's quite difficult uh, to do that, especially for me as a, on a touring schedule this crazy. I know I'm in a club environment or festival environment all the time and there's a lot of people, also a lot of queer people. But um, when I'm in you know, touring mode, it's basically like full focus. I stay sometimes after the gig, but usually it's like, okay, to the gig, after the gig, back in the car, into the hotel, into Next the plane. Bus, plane. Exactly, plane, plus club, another club, another club, taxi. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. 17 gigs this month. Yes. There's no time. N almost none, yeah. Almost. But uh, when you see a person, is there something that makes you like, ah, oh, like a quality within a person that makes you feel like intrigued? Oh yeah, I mean, uh, first of all, it's always the smile. If it's with the eyes or if it's with the actual teeth, uh, for me it's always about the vibe, you know? If you, I mean, I do this the same way when I DJ and when I play and when I perform. Um, if you are able to captivate someone with a vibe, you know, it's very um, intimate, it's very special and it's very immediate. So, even when I flirt, you know, it's in the first five to ten minutes, it's very like, you know, you, d you give the little signs, you give the little wink, you know, you, you play at the tease game. And then, of course, when you start to engage in a conversation, um, the vibe unfolds. But it's important to have that vibe in the beginning for me to catch an attention. Do you need humor? Sorry? Do you need humor? Like a vibe to s that is filled with humor? Humor. Humor, yes, okay. Humor. <laughs> How do I say humor? Oh, humor is very essential. I mean, people need to be able to laugh about themselves. At the same time, I like dark and dry humor, you know, um, a little bit of uh, everything, but also dorkiness and like, I love nerds, I have to say. Oh, <laughs> dad nerds, jokes. that's yeah, your yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 dad, jerk, dad uh, jokes always get me because it's like so ridiculous and so boomerish <laughs> that really resonates with me and it, it comes off as cute and um, I really enjoy that as well but like I'm thinking science nerds now and as a nerd who are really into not like maybe music nerds is that so also a thing for me it's like nerds if you're like very specific and very into some uh, a specific subject or genre or whatever if you're really into it and you know what you're talking about and you're really dedicated and committed uh, that for me is a nerd you know yeah then I'm really up for that. Someone who's passionate about something. Okay, I was very aware of what I was gonna wear to this date because I was like, it's hard to look fabulous next to you. <laughs> you did very well, darling. Do you ever need like space? Oh yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Definitely. I mean, being on tour like this crazily over the last year and a half, um, I very much value my own private space as well. Mm. That usually looks like me being on my couch watching anime and having a spliff. But, um, you anime, know, I love that. Yeah. All good people are into anime. I How mean, is it? Maybe it should be like a, a checkbook for Green Flag. Green into Flag, yeah, anime. I love it. <laughs> One. Studio Ghibli, check. <laughs> but because when, you, when I meet you, for example, when I see you around here, you're such a beaming energy, like, you see a lot of artists who are drained from their gigs and they just lay there like, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you are like, hello. And you're just giving your all all the time. Okay, three reasons. First of all, this is basically a luxury resort rehab for DJs. So, of course, we need to have some kind of entertainment at some point. Um, True second of all, yes, right? Second of all, we have a pool. The sun is blazing, so yes, we need to have that energy to be reflected. And third, I packed all these looks, so I will not be like, let them waste away with not giving them a show. So they need to be, you know, escorted. Are you a giver in relationships? 
Always. Yeah, it seemed like. Always, yeah. With birthdays and such, who are you? If someone would forget your birthday? <laughs> um, noted, but not the end of the world. Because no. I know how sh things can get. I'm the worst with birthdays. I have to write that shit down. I just recently confused my dad's birthday with another date, and that was like. <sighs> and his birthday was two days ago, so. Are you very close with your dad? Now? Yeah, 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 I'm very oh. close with that. But there was like a switch up like 10 years ago where his birth certificate was changed two days earlier. So he found out that his birthday is actually two days later than it actually was. And that was still confusing me. So I called him basically two days earlier. And I didn't know that he was in the States. So when I called him, it was like 12 oh, a.m. here. No. And I called him, I FaceTimed him. It was like completely dark. And all I got was like, I was like, Dad, happy birthday. He was like, it's 5 a.m. You're my hair. like, what the hell? And then I also mistook his birthday for the wrong date. But I mean, my dad forgives me because he knows how busy I am. But still, I called him two days later as well to check up on him and to wish him another actual happy birthday. So sorry, dad. <laughs> but when it's your birthday, yeah. is it a week long? No, no, no. My birthday. I'm, my birthday is on the 27th of December, which is like the worst date probably next to Christmas. Because most of my friends are either with their families or out of town somewhere or still fucking hungover or in like a food coma from Christmas. So it's always like difficult to get everyone together. Plus it's cold it's in the winter. It's between Christmas and New Year's. So no one really wants to go out because they want to save themselves for New Year's. So my birthdays are usually quite shitty, which is why I... Shitty did. or shilly? No, no, shitty. Shitty. <laughs> which is also the reason why I now have a new rule since a couple of years that I uh, postpone my birthday into the summer and we're going to have like, a proper summer boat party every year now. Yeah. Voila. This is how a true entertainment does it. Baby, no, no, entertainer no, no. does it. Exactly. <laughs> wow. Okay, so what's your new birthday? My new birthday is either in July or August. It's not going to be a specific date? It's not going to be a specific date. It's going to be a date when everybody has time. I love that. So flexible. Yeah, you, right? you need flexible people. Right. <laughs> I mean, we should all be a little more flexible. I mean, mm. we all have our jobs. We're working our 9 to 5 or we're touring or whatnot. And everything is like so planned out. I'm yeah. half German, so for me it's like control, control, control. So for me to give that control away, to be able to have some kind of diversity and fluidity in my day, and uh, gives me the edge and the freedom to be more quirky, more creative, and to breathe a little bit. You know? Yeah. I have people who have my schedule, so I'm trying to clear my head as much as possible <laughs> when it comes to that. So would you uh, give your contacts to a day? Like, would you set up a connection between your date slash partner and your assistant slash manager. Never. So they can like keep control on like when they can book, have time for you. No, no, no. <laughs> I, like when I, when I want to see someone that I'm dating or anything, I'll do this myself. I mean, I would never have my like manager or assistant reach out to anyone that I'm dating. No, say, not reach out, but like, <laughs> okay, then I can... Like the schedule, like, so he has time at five o'clock next week on Thursday. <laughs> like, that, that's not how it works. No. no. I will always make time uh, I wouldn't for be the surprised. people that I love. But yeah, yeah, I, I can imagine, but, but do you know how next, what your life looks like next week? More or less, like normally, I mean. More or less, yes. Um, like right now, it's like touring, 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 touring. So there's literally no in between. I have like this blindfold on. It's like, okay, let's go. Um, but when it's like more of a, you know, early in the year, when you know you have two or three gigs in the weekend and during the week you're home, then I can plan ahead and say like, okay, so I have three, four days. I just have to fit this and this in. Otherwise, I'm flexible. I tell this to my friends usually. So, and then we coordinate, okay, we can go for dinner on this date. And then it works out. Are we good still? <laughs> oh my god. Computer overheating. Oh. This date is getting too hot already, but, you know? <laughs> yeah, it is. But um, would you bring your date? Would you bring your date on uh, tour? Yes. Is that a bonus if they are flexible? They're digital nomads. Uh, it's, it's not a bonus. It's like I, I appreciate it if they find the time and the energy to support and to mm. come and to see what I'm doing. and you know, be my backbone in that kind of situation because it does help if you have someone behind you in the booth or even knowing that there's someone close by that you love, that supports you. It gives you that level of security, that level of um, family and you know, you're being on tour by yourself 
can be very difficult, especially if you um, do like a new festivals, new promoters, you get in front of so many different new faces all the time that you kind of have to memorize. And you always have to perform, you have to have a certain category in your head that you like to, to tick off, that everything goes well. Especially for me as a perfectionist, everything needs to be on point, which it never is, but still, um, I aspire to that. But having someone, for example, yesterday, um, so many DJ colleagues were there, also my manager was there with his wife, um, my new tour manager was there, who I have a really close relationship already, like within two weeks, we like, oh, buddies, two, buddies, wow. buddies. And um, nice. yeah, the brother of my best friend was also there. And for me, that's the level of family is showing up yeah. for you. Not because, okay, yeah, he's like a DJ and like blah, 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 it's amazing to be there, but they want to be there because they want to support you, your family, and that level of appreciation is um, more than anything to me. It is. Now I have a super off topic question, but it's like because the relationship you have with your tour manager. Yeah. It's so close. I, I, I'm just thinking you're stuck together. So what is the, how do you hire a tour manager? Like you need to vibe, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, funny story. The first time we encountered each other was last year when I played print works uh, for Afterlife, which was more of an <clears throat> complicated endeavor. Um, but he was the, uh, the stage manager at that time and he was the one and only person who was taking care of me, proper care of me, and made me feel secure and welcome mm. at um, a, a, yeah, a venue I didn't feel fitted for, you know? I felt I was like, uh, yeah, a bit tokenized, I have to say. Oh, um, wow. So I was like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna do the gig. I, anyone at the entire lineup was playing a completely different sound, you know what Afterlife is about. And I did the uh, exact opposite because, you know, you booked me for me. I'm not going to play like down tempo, uh, no. atmospheric, melodic tech house. So um, I brought the vibes and I felt like, okay, I played also downstairs. So in the Inkwell, I think, was the, uh, is the second stage. The vibe was, inc was incredible. Like the people were very giving and the English crowd is always very much uh, on fire. But he was the one... Shout out to British people. Shout out to all the Brits down there. And um, yeah, he gave me like a very good feeling of security and of welcoming. And um, two months or three months later, I had um, a meeting in Ibiza with this, uh, the ex tour manager of Adam Bayer, who is now starting his own um, agency for tour management and production. Really? And yes, exactly. And what did you do with them? So basically, they hired Lewis. And Are you involved? No, no, he was not even in the picture by then. I... And then I found out that. Lewis is part of their team and uh, they proposed Lewis to be my tour manager for the first arm and like, see how it goes and yeah we've been together on the first weekend and it was like he's a super fast learner I don't have to do much like he's really on it and um, yeah he's also a really cool and chill dude to hang around you know he's the balance for my crazy full on <laughs> oh the balance the balance very important yeah Okay, last question. Shoot. Sometimes you find these people that you are very drawn to their energy and you think they're fabulous. Yeah. But sometimes they drain you a bit. Yeah. Could you have a relationship where you are like together sometimes, <laughs> but then you are mo like, you can never live together. You can, like, you know. Uh, okay, so it's very simple actually. Um, it's all about boundaries. You know, mm. the, the older you get, the more you learn about people and the more you learn about yourself. And it's the same thing as it is in relationships uh, for like private sexual relationships or friendships. If you have the feeling that you are putting more into something than you are receiving, um, and also about expectations, you know, you cannot always expect this, the person to be able to give the same as you are because maybe they're in a different state, maybe they have like a different background, social background, um, and a different love language. So mm. if you have the feeling that things are unbalanced, um, you just have to be able to realize that um, this is not on them, but this is in your power to say like, you know what, this is the love that I'm putting into it and I feel that I'm not getting the same out of it and I'm not blaming you for this. I'm just gonna take a step back so we're on the same level of what I wanna share and the level that I'm gonna put into this relationship and that I'm getting out so I'm not feeling depleted at the end. Mm. Okay, last, last, last question. Yes. 
What's your favorite lang love language for the your partner to be? For my partner to be mm, attentive, aware, like um, to be that they want to be proactive. And what do they want then? Sorry. Like what do they need from you? What do they need from me? Yeah, like what are their like love language? You know. Well, their love language, in, in the best case, is just loving me in the way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, perfect answer. No. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> no, but, but for no example, I'm exactly. Yeah, I'm twisting it around because, like, your love language. We were speaking about yes. it, and then, and uh, what you are able to put out here. Yes. You know, some people are like, my love language is there's something that is like I want gifts, yeah. right? And for example, I, I wouldn't be able to date yeah, with someone yeah. because I forget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I can buy gifts on birthdays or, and sometimes, but I'm not very romantic, so it no, wouldn't no. be a good match for me. For me, it's in the little things, like literally like, um, planning a surprise trip somewhere or taking me for a, uh, out for a restaurant mm. or like um, surprising me in the evening, just like ringing my door and like, hey, I, I arranged something, let's go somewhere, we have a picnic, you know, or, or a massage at night, you know, where they don't expect it and like, being cuddly and just being there and listening to it and just sit down and just be present. Yeah. You know, that's, you know, be a human being, you know, be aware of what's going on, have empathy. Yes. That's it. No pretensions. No pretentious people, please. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, give me a hug. That was our first, no, second date. First real date. Yes. <laughs> I was like, but many more dollars. I'm gonna many. steal your wife. <laughs> yeah. He's so scared now. I know he's shivering in the corner. <laughs> On a date with Patrick Mason.